all of our military personnel. Thank you. We wanted to, on this Veterans Day weekend, we wanted to celebrate all of the people who have served in the armed forces. And we wanted to say thank you. These are just a microcosm of people who serve in the military, but these are some people who are members of Impact Church. And we had uh, pictures, and we wanted to celebrate them. And we are so thankful for the service that you rendered so that we could enjoy the liberties that we enjoy, not only here in the United States, but also abroad. So many people have paid a price so that we can enjoy these liberties, and we want to say thank you. We pause and acknowledge the service, uh, and we just give God praise for you, and we thank you. And we feel like it's only befitting uh, as uh, members of the body of Christ uh, to be able to pause and say thanks because we recognize that you uh, paid a price to be able to serve and to serve us, and we just acknowledge that, and we are so thankful for it. We just appreciate it and give God praise. Uh, we like to do this every year. We uh, uh, do something to honor all the people in the military who serve because we think it's important. Um, one of the things I wanted to do was to do this, but also I wanted to pause and I wanted to pray for our country because I'm convinced that as we have come to the conclusion of this election, I'm glad uh, that we are able to recognize that uh, God is on the throne and he is our sovereign king. He is our Lord. Uh, we know God is the one who elevate and raise up presidents, elect officials. And so it's imperative that we pray for these leaders of our country. Uh, president, governors, mayors, uh, congressmen and women. We pray for these individuals because we recognize God is the one who has allowed them to ascend to these positions. And so we want to pray for them and ask God's mercy and grace upon them, but also our country. Because the one thing that we want as a church and as a body of believers is whoever's in office, we want to be able to exercise our religious liberty. We want to be able to proclaim that the Bible is true. It's the word of God. We want to be able to share Jesus Christ in the public square. And we want to be able, we, we want to be able to preach against sin. And that's our desire and righteousness and proclaim holiness regardless of the administration. So since there's been so much tension in our world and tension in our society I feel like it's only befitting that we pause today and that we pray and we ask God's mercy and grace upon our country upon our citizens when I was in Dallas I was serving at a church and at that time uh, President uh, Bush was the president and as one of my roles as associates it was the responsibility to pray every Sunday and whenever I would pray I would always pray for President Bush I always pray for him without fail, by name, him and his family. And I've done that for every president, President Obama, as well as President Trump, and I would do the same for President Biden, President-elect Biden. And I remember one of the pastors there, he would say, every time you pray for President Bush, I'll be so mad at you. I didn't want you praying for him. And I said, well, <laughs> as I look at my Bible, Romans, Timothy, it's our duty. We may not agree with their administration, with their policies. We may not like the person, but we have the responsibility. As people of God, as people who've been the beneficiary of the mercy, the grace of God, the forgiveness of God, that we pray for them as leaders so that we can worship God freely. So that's what we want to do. We want to pray for our country and pray for our president-elect. President Biden, as well as the president who's going out, President Trump as well. So will you join with me and stand as we pray this morning? Father God, we love you. We thank you for how you do all things well. Lord God, we thank you that you are truly the sovereign God over the universe. We have elected officials. Lord, we have military and we celebrate Veterans Day and we thank you for all of those. But God, we recognize that you are the great I am. You are the Lord of hosts who fight our battles. And Father, the victories that the United States have won and we've been the recipient of, it is because you have granted us favor. And Lord God, we are praying today for more favor as we go forth. We're praying, Father, for President-elect Biden. We pray for President Trump as his terms concluded. 
we pray for the rest of the people who have been elected for their various positions. We lift them up and we lay them before you. Father, I pray for these United States of America, Lord God, that we would be people who would live out our faith and always have the opportunity to live out our faith, to always proclaim that your Bible is true, that salvation is found in Jesus and none other, and that we can preach against sin, unrighteousness, and make your holiness and your righteousness known. May that always be the case. I pray that we can truly be the church in private and in the public. And Lord, there will be no reprisal for us because we love you and proclaim your name. Lord God, please be merciful to us as we go forth. Bring about civility, peace, and calm in the hearts and minds of your people. And let the church, Lord, shine brighter than even before. May we make you known. May we share your love, your grace, and Lord, may we always magnify your name. Lord, we thank you, we love you, and we give you praise. We give you glory, and we give you honor. And we ask it all in the mighty, majestic name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And everybody said, amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. You may be seated. You may be seated. Impact, today we're going to be in Psalms 26. That's going to be our text. We're going to be in Psalms 26, and we are talking about today thankfulness, part two, thankfulness remembering the source thankfulness remembering the source we are remembering that God is the source of all blessings he is our prophet he is our priest he is our king that Jesus Christ and he is the source of all of our blessings Psalms 26 is our text for today and as you're turning to Psalms 26 I want to remind you as always we ask you to send out a social media either also in the form of a text a verse a quote or something from the service so that you can let people know that you were at Impact Church, 5401 Shadow Bay in place, www.myimpactchurch.org. We want you to send it out because it's part of how we share our faith, how we witness, how we use it as a opportunity to let people know that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so we want you to make certain you do that. Um, please, please, please send it out. It is imperative. We are trying to make Jesus Christ known because we understand that he is truly our Lord, our God, and there is no other. And so this morning, we're going to be in Psalms 26. It's going to be our text. We're going to read the first seven verses. So I'm going to ask you to please stand with me as we read seven verses, first seven verses, as out of honor and reverence for our God. And I'm so glad to see you in the sanctuary this morning because this is truly a privilege and opportunity to be here, to be able to worship God. Uh, so many people don't have this privilege, but God has blessed us. He's given us strength, the ability to walk in. And uh, we want to thank God for that privilege and give him the glory that he deserves. And so it's just a delight to be able to be in the sanctuary. Psalms 26 is our text. Uh, I'm going to begin reading. I'm in the New American Standard Version in case we read a little different, but that's my text for this morning. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity, and I have trust in the Lord without wavering. Examine me, O Lord, and try me. Test my mind and my heart. For your loving kindness is before my eyes, and I have walked in your truth. I do not sit with deceitful men, nor will I go with pretenders. I hate the assembly of evildoers, and I will not sit with the wicked. I shall wash my hands in innocence, and I will go about your altar, O Lord that I may proclaim with the voice of thanksgiving and declare all your wonders. You may be seated. Lord God, we thank you again for today. Thank you for your truth, for your word. And Lord, be with us as we look in it today. Guide us, sustain, and keep, and for whatever you do, we'd be certain to give you the praise of the Lord and honor. We love you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. The Hebrew Bible has two primary words that are used for thanksgiving and thanks. There are a array of words that could be used to communicate the idea of thanks, being thankful, as well as thanksgiving. But there are primarily two, and both are used in various contexts. The verbal stem and the context provide aids or insight into how the word should be used. But the first word that is used there is yada. 
Leslie Allen says that it is the idea of giving thanks or an acknowledgement or oftentimes praise or even also the desire to confess. And so when we think about thanksgiving, we have to think of the term more than just in a myopic use. Because the term carries a causative also effect with it on occasions where the audience is challenged to thank God, to acknowledge him, or to praise the Lord in some form or capacity. Oftentimes the emphasis is placed on the need for recognition by an audience or an individual that the Lord is worthy and deserves praise. That's what he says here. You can see some of that in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 8. He says, oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. He, he is saying we need to give thanks to God. And then he further affirms there is a need for people to call upon the name of the Lord. He said, make known his deeds among the people. He comes back not only saying that there's a need to give thanks to God, to call upon him, but also in the process of doing this, you need to let people know who God is and what God has done. When was the last time you let people know about the goodness of God? The second term is toda. Yada, the first toda is the first, the second and it is rendered thanksgiving. Also, it is used for the thank offering, and it's used to denote a song of thanksgiving. When you're talking about thanking God, here you need to add several different levels to this aspect of thanksgiving. It's not just I'm thanking him in a mental or acknowledging mindset. But also there is a thanksgiving that comes with me offering something to God. And then when I'm offering, I'm to have accompanied it with a song. There should be some singing that accompanies my thanksgiving offering. Alexander talks, Ralph Alexander talks about that there is the need for the public proclamation. There is a declaration about the attributes of God that goes with this idea of todah. And there needs to be this verbal format or element that accompanies the mindset of thanking God, not just only the mental acumen. In my thanking God, there should be a verbal pronouncement, but also there could be the offering and also there should be singing as I'm bringing my offering to God. He said that was what was present in the Levitical Thanksgiving system. So we see that Thanksgiving is pretty broad and it's pretty expansive. It's not just simply me thinking or even just saying thank you. I'm convinced the reason why God wanted them to have such an elaborate, such an entailed process of offering thanks was because of all that he has done for his people. And when you begin to pause and reflect and contemplate on the fact all that God has done for you, it takes more than just a simple word or just a mental acknowledgement. It won't, makes you want to say, God, I want to offer my service to you. And while I'm offering my service, I want to just sing a song of thanksgiving because you've been so gracious and good. You deserve all of my thanks. The psalmist here is going to do some of this thanking. But the psalmist is going to thank in Psalms 26 because he's being accused. There are indictments against the psalmist that he's not guilty of. And the psalmist doesn't appreciate the indictments against him because he says, I'm innocent of the accusations. In Psalms 26, the first thing I want you to see as we're going through this is that thanksgiving begins with the heart. I, I want you to get that first point. Thanksgiving begins with the heart. 
When I'm talking about the heart of Thanksgiving, I'm not talking about this muscle that's hidden here in your chest cavity. When I'm talking about the heart, I'm talking about mental in your mind. That, that Thanksgiving is something that has to begin in the mind. It has to be cultivated. It has to be shown and taught to individuals because we don't come here with a heart of thanksgiving. We're not born naturally giving thanks. A matter of fact, when we are born, we are selfish, self-centered, and that is all we think about is the self. If you look at a baby when a baby is born, all that baby does is, is just receive all of your care and concern. The baby can't walk, so it has to be carried. It can't eat. It has to be fed. It can't even clean itself. Somebody has to wash it. And not at one point when you are carrying the baby, does he say thank you? When you're washing the baby, does he say, I appreciate that? When you're feeding, you say, man, that was good. Give me, thank you. N not at one point of its care does a baby acknowledge all that you're doing for it. It is ungrateful. But parents, we have to teach. We have to cultivate a heart of thankfulness in that child or otherwise that child will remain ungrateful. The child will begin to believe that I should receive this. I'm entitled to this type of treatment and I don't need to acknowledge at any point that you have been gracious, you have been good, you've been benevolent, you've been merciful, you have been very giving. And if a parent doesn't cultivate it into a child, that child will never see the need to say thank you. See, that's why when children receive gifts and people give them gifts for birthdays and give them gifts for graduation. That's why they have to be taught and compelled to sit down and write thank you notes because they need to understand they really didn't have to give you that gift. They could have redirected those funds to another recipient. But since they gave it to you, you need to sit down and pause, write a note of thanks and send them a text. And then you all might want to call and say, I want to thank you for that gift that you've given me because you need to have a heart and cultivate a heart of thanksgiving. Roche, where you're going? Let me tell you something. If God has been blessing and been gracious to you, if God has given you good and good gifts, I think every now and then we should also pause and say, Lord, thank you for the gifts that you have given me. God, I just want to thank you. Thanksgiving begins in the heart. And if you haven't recognized what God has done, it will easy, be easy for you to feel almost entitled to the blessings that you are the recipient of. And you won't be as thankful. The psalmist here is in a situation where he's not so thankful for the people who are accusing him. Because there are people who are coming against him, who are accusing him, making accusations against him. And he says, Lord, I need you to vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. He said, I have trust in the Lord without wavering. He said, examine me, O Lord, try me, test my mind and my heart. He said, Lord, he said, I have been faithful to you. Some of you may be saying, is this the psalmist, David, that this subscription says? How can David say that he has been unwavering and faithful to God? Didn't he commit sin? Oh, yes, he did. The psalmist is not saying that I didn't sin, that I didn't fall short. He said, he's not saying that I didn't need to go to God and confess and acknowledge that I had sinned against him. But what he's saying is, he says, Lord, you are always my God. You are always my redeemer. You are always the one I came to. And whenever I fell short, I didn't put my trust in any other gods. You are always my God. And therefore, I have been faithful to you and you alone. And there is no other God. You see the difference? 
Here it is. He says, these individuals are coming against me, Lord. He said, I've done what is right. He said, but there are accusations against me. He said, Lord, I need you to vindicate me in this situation. He can say that because the psalmist recognized the source of his blessings. Fact number one, your view of the source of blessings will determine your attitude toward thanksgiving. See, if you are not convinced that God is the one who has been blessing and keeping you, you will be reluctant probably to have or to cultivate an attitude of thanksgiving. See, once you recognize who it is really keeping you, who it is watching over you, who it is who has really provided for you, who it is who has allowed you to have the help, the strength, the economic opportunity, the one who kept you from catching COVID and healed you from COVID, the one who has retained your source of income in the context of COVID, the one who is going to take you through and over COVID, if you have not recognized, you will not be inclined to thank him for what he has done. Because your heart, your mind is not quite there. But once you realize the source of your blessing, it will give you a greater attitude and a heart of thanksgiving. Yes, it will. See, thanksgiving has to be cultivated. And many of us have not cultivated at the level we need that thanksgiving to God because we don't recognize that his loving kindness is before our eyes. The psalmist says, I walked in your truth. I did not sit with deceitful men, verse 4, nor did I go with the pretenders. He said, I went with the pseudo or fake fakers. He says, I was with you, God. He says, I will not go with them. He said, I hate the assembly of evildoers and I will not sit with the wicked. He said, I shall wash my hands in innocence. He says, I will go about your altar, O Lord. He said, I'm going to sacrifice. I'm going to give to you, O Lord. He said, not anywhere else. Why is that? Because he recognized the source of his true blessings and he could thank God for it. When was the last time you really recognized the source of your blessings? The psalmist recognized it here, and I want you to see what he says here in the culmination. Because, see, I'm convinced that once you recognize the blessing, then there should be a verbal declaration and acknowledgement of who blessed you and to whom has blessed you. Point number two is this. Thanksgiving ends with the tongue. Thanksgiving ends with the tongue tongue what do you mean first of all it begins in the mind but once it has its origin and been cultivated in the mind you have to verbally declare and affirm that God has been good to you he says here in verse 7 that I may proclaim with the voice of thanksgiving and declare all your wonders. What he's saying here is there needs to be a verbal declaration. There needs to be something audible whereby you say that you affirm that God has been good to you. I'm convinced that when we talk about giving God thanks, that it's beyond just in the mind. There needs to be the, not only the mental, but also the offering, but the singing of thanksgiving whereby we are saying, God, I appreciate what you've done for me. But not just to God, but also to others. See, when you and I verbally say to God, Lord God, thank you, there is something that happens not only for the recipient, but also for the sender and for the speaker. When you verbalize and when you say to somebody, thank you for the gift, thank you for your graciousness, thank you for your kindness, it starts to stimulate something within your person as you're acknowledging what they have done for you. It creates in you a different heart, mind, and attitude, and it also lets the other person know that you see and understand the source of what you have been the recipient of. God wants us to verbalize it. He wants us to speak 
He wants it to be audible. He doesn't just want it to be in the mind. He wants us to say, thank you. Lord God, you didn't have to do this, but you did. And so I want to say thank you. See, it's easy if you're not careful to kind of have the baby mindset about your blessings. When you have eaten, you're like, well, I should have gotten food. I deserve it. When you've been clothed, I deserve these clothes. I deserved it. When you've been cleaned, I should have been clean. I need somebody to do this for me. And not recognize that there are many who have not been the recipient of those blessings. And it's something that has to be cultivated within the hearts and the minds of men and women. We don't come here with an attitude of thanksgiving. When you see somebody and you open the door for them and let them go in, and if they don't say thank you for opening the door, it's more about them than you. It speaks volumes about their heart than you. When you pause and let somebody turn in front of you when you're in traffic, they're trying to get on the street and you pause and let them in and they don't wave and say thank you and acknowledge your kind gesture. It's more about them than about you. It's reflective of their heart. And see, there should be something within you that says because of your act of kindness to me, I just want to acknowledge the fact that you didn't have to do it. I want to say thank you, even if it's in a wave. We have a culture that feel that it's entitled to certain blessings. It's entitled to certain privileges and don't recognize the source of all the blessings that they're the recipient of. And I'm convinced that as believers that we should be the ones who try to help people understand by verbally affirming that we're thankful. Fact number two, verbally offer thanksgiving for yourself and others. Listen, when you say it to people, when you verbalize it, when you declare it, when you acknowledge it, it changed your heart and the person who has given you the gift. It stimulates, it stirs you at a different level than when you ignore it and act as if you are entitled. I hope you received that this morning here. See, when once you start to recognize that God did not have to do this, when you recognize that God has been so gracious, then it stirs, it moves something when you verbally affirm, when you declare, and that's why he says, Praise should continually be in our mouth. It should be up on our lips. God knew that we need to be giving him praise, thanking him, and acknowledging him because he has been so good to us. That's why in Psalms 103, he says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that was in me will bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits. Just don't forget them. Don't ignore, don't miss them. Why? Because it is within our human condition to be ungrateful. And we have to be challenged and reminded of the need to thank God for all that he's done. As we're going into this Thanksgiving season, I want you to do something. Do this for me, do this for me. Write it down, write it down. I want you Beginning today until Thanksgiving, I want you to list things that you are thankful for. Write them down. Just write every day. Just sit down and just write some things you're thankful for. And, and, and if you say, I, I don't have time, take your phone, 
notebook or whatever, and record, just begin to list and say the things you are thankful for. But see, if you write them down, you will be able to see them. And when you look at the list of the things that you're thankful for, it will begin to shape. It will begin to mold and make your mind understand and comprehend all that God is doing for you. When you begin to write down and list all the things that God has blessed you with that you didn't have, that you could have been without, and then you begin to say, Lord, I thank you that my health is good. I thank you that I'm delivered from COVID. I thank you that I have employment in the context of COVID. I thank you, oh God, that I have my parents, I have my spouse, I have my loved ones. When you begin to thank God that you live in a free society where you can go and you can come and you start listening those things. It will change your heart, your mind. It will give you a renewed perspective upon the source of all of your blessings. Just write them down. Write them down. Take every day. Just pause and say, Lord, I'm so thankful. Just write them down. It'll begin to change you. One of the things Watch this. And I want you to hear me on this. Watch this. One of the things that happens with so many people, and they'll share with me, is, is after somebody dies, whether it's a husband or wife, after somebody dies, that they begin to recognize their value and their worth. They say, it was not until they were gone that I begin to understand and appreciate their worth. Are you with me this morning? If you're watching via live stream, I want you to listen, lean in. Oftentimes, we have people who are in our lives and they have become fixtures in our lives and we don't recognize their value or their worth. But if they die and they're gone, we begin to recognize what they contributed and brought to our lives. And it's usually too late. It's quiet in here. And it's quiet because you know like I know that it's true. And a lot of times we're angry, there's contention. But if that person weren't there, our lives would be vastly different. And I'm convinced it's the same way with the holy God. If God removes his restraining grace, if God renew, remove all of his blessings and his favor on our lives, if God were to take away his salvation, if God did those things, we would recognize the goodness of God if he were to withdraw them. If he withdrew his presence, we would recognize it. And that's why I want to challenge you. Don't wait until you really recognize. Now you should see it and you should say, Lord, I want to thank you and I want to thank those around me. I thank you for those even around me. Here it is. He says, there should be this proclamation with the voice of thanksgiving. But what are you thanking him for? All your deeds in the second part of verse 7. The psalmist says, I look at my life and I recognize that all that I have is because of the God that I serve. He's the source of my blessings and therefore I thank him. The song we were just singing earlier, he says, I thank you for the God that you are. See, see, that's why I love the lyrics on the screen, so you can see them. See, he said in the line, he says, I thank you for the God that you are. See, because some people have a God who can't forgive their sins. They have gods that, who can't hear their prayers. They have a God that cannot respond in their time of need. They have a God that can't reach when they are in dire straits. But I'm so glad that I have a God who hears my prayers, a God who responds to my needs. 
He's a very present help in the time of trouble. I have a God who I can say thank you for because he has blessed me. And therefore, I want to declare his wonders, his works. I hope impact today. I hope today that you will cultivate a heart of thanksgiving. Mm. Mm. I hope that you would not only cultivate it for others, but when you verbalize it, you will see how it benefits you as well for yourself. Our impact fact for today is this. Thanksgiving reflects the heart of the recipient of God's mercy and grace. See, if you really are giving up thanks, it tells me something about your heart. But if you are assuming that you should be the recipient of these things, that also tells me something about your heart. But I hope you have this heart that says, Lord, I recognize you're the source. You are the provider of my good and perfect gifts. And Lord, I just want to say thank you. Father, we love you. We thank you for today. We give you praise. We give you glory and we give you honor. Lord God, I ask that we would continue to cultivate a heart of thanksgiving. Lord, even in the context of adversity and difficulty, you are worthy of all of our thanks, praise, and all of the honor. And Lord, we give it to you. We ask it all in the mighty majestic name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Will you please stand to your feet this morning? If you're here today, Sir Roche, you know what? I'm not a believer. You have not placed your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ alone for salvation. And you say, you know what? I want to place my faith in Christ for salvation alone. If that is you today, please step to the aisle and step to the back of the church. If you want to place your faith in Jesus Christ alone, if you're in the sanctuary, if you're watching this via live stream, there's a link. Click on it. Please follow it. Fill out the information. We want to make certain that we connect with you and show you how you can grow in your relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Second challenge, if you're here, you say, you know what? I'm a believer, but I just want prayer. You want somebody to pray with you? Please step to the aisle and step to the back of the church. And third, if you're here, you say, you know what? I just want to unite with Impact Church. Utilize my time, my talents, and treasures for the glory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If that's you, please step to the back of the church. And if you're viewing online, click the link. We want you to unite with our ministry. Be a part of Impact Church. You can do it from via online. We want to connect with you. Fill out the card, and we will make certain that we connect with you. Someone from our staff will reach out to you. Is there one this morning? Is there one? Is there one? Our Lord is here. His Spirit is here. He desires to move in your life. Is there one? Is there one? God is so faithful. He's gracious. He is a merciful, good God, compassionate, none like him. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Hey, at this time, we have any first-time guests. If this is your first time fellowshipping with us at Impact Church, we want to say welcome. Thank you so much for being our Impact family this morning. Hey, we have a gift for you. We want to spend just a couple of moments with you. If you would step to the out and step to the back, there are men and women at the back. My welcome community, we have a gift for you. We want to step out in the foyer, just give you a gift. and want to say thank you for your presence. If you're a first-time guest, please step to the aisle and step to the back. We want to say thank you so much. Also, via live stream, if you can fill out the link and someone will contact you, we are delighted you're worshiping with us this morning at Impact Church. Hey, Impact Church family, please don't forget on Tuesday nights we have prayer at 6. We would love for you to join us here in the sanctuary for prayer. Then immediately following that, we have Bible study. And then at 645, we have our prayer call. You can join us on the prayer call. We would love for you to be a part of that prayer call. If you would like to be a part of it, just call in. Every other day, we are on the prayer call at 655. You can call in, and we are praying and praising together. Just call in and be a part of that prayer line. We would love for you to be a part of that. Impact, we are praying for one another because we believe in the power of prayer. Amen? And God is such a gracious God. Hey, let's close in prayer, and we want you to have a blessed day, Lord. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for today. We thank you, Lord, how you do all things well. Lord, you are a good God, none like you, and we just thank you for the blessings you shower upon us. Lord, watch over us, keep us, and sustain us. And Lord, for that, we would give you the praise, the glory, and honor. We love you. We ask it all in the mighty and majestic name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Have a blessed day, Lord, and thank you for your presence. Grace and peace be unto you, my brother and sister, from God who loves us, both as father and mother. 
It is my prayer that this worship we just experienced and that the word you just received has encouraged and created in you a faith that's greater than any fear. If you're watching this broadcast and you're moved to walk in faith, surrendering yourself to the Lordship of Jesus Christ for the very first time, or if you just like to reconnect yourself in your walk with the Lord, send us a message through the Connect Us page on our website, and one of our leaders will reach out to you and joyfully share with you God's perfect plan of salvation for your life. If you're desiring to be a part of the Impact Church of the Woodlands community, on our website, you'll also find information that you need to connect with us that we might build together relationship to count you as one of our own. Now may the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost rest, rule, and abide in us now, henceforth, and forever. Amen. Thank you so much for watching our live stream. We want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also like us on Facebook so you can stay connected with all the activities of Impact Church of Williams. Thank you again. Have a blessed day in the Lord.